Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you a holistic living vlog, summer edition. It is a few weeks till the summer solstice, but the weather here is pretty summery, so we're just gonna go with calling it a summer vlog, even though it's still the end of spring. I think last year I vlogged around this time too, kind of in this like transition point. So apparently I'm liking to bring vlogs around this time of year. So I'm just gonna take you through things that I do in this season to really work toward living a more holistic lifestyle to me living holistically has a lot to do with working to live more in tune with the seasons so i'm kind of going to share with you how i do that to hopefully give you some inspiration on how you could do that as well so let's get into the vlog First up, I'm gonna show you how I make my smoothie bowl for breakfast in these warmer months. So I either use dragon fruit or acai. Today we're going with dragon fruit. And I use oat milk as a base. So this oat milk is really good, honestly. There's no extra added weird ingredients. As you can see here, it's a pretty short ingredient list. So I do like this brand. This is my favorite oat milk at this moment. I'm using my food processor to make my smoothie bowl. You could also use a blender. I have a Vitamix, which should be really good at making a smoothie bowl, but honestly, I find it to be more difficult for some reason. I don't know, the food processor works better for me, so you could use either. So basically, you pour a little oat milk in or whatever base you're using. I like to kind of break up the dragon fruit packet to help it blend a little bit easier. And then you pour that into your blender or food processor. Then I add in some frozen berries for a little extra added sweetness. If you are buying acai and you're using that brand I showed you, Samboza or whatever, I do recommend getting the unsweetened and then adding some berries to sweeten it instead because I think their sweetened package actually like adds in added like cane sugar. So I usually buy the unsweetened. So all you have to do next is blend that up until it's a nice smooth consistency. Separate it into bowls. I made enough for two servings for me and my husband. And then I just like to put mine in the freezer while I prep the rest of the ingredients because sometimes I make it a little too soft and melty. So putting it in the freezer for a few minutes really helps get it to be that consistency that you want. While that's in the freezer, I prep the rest of my ingredients. So for the extra fruit today, I'm adding some banana, strawberries, and blueberries. So I'm just prepping that here now. And I really don't like the banana butts so or any soft spots on the bananas. So I'm cutting that away. Don't worry, the dogs are gonna get a little treat. They like to eat it, so I save that for them. And then all you have to do is assemble your smoothie bowl and you can really use whatever toppings you want. So I'm adding my fresh fruit on, I add some granola in and then lots of peanut butter. And this is one of my favorite things to have for breakfast this time of year. I have it a lot for breakfast. It's nice to add in those fresh berries and really choose fruits that are in season. I find that living in tune with the seasons is really helpful when working to live a more holistic lifestyle. So choose fruits that are in season for your breakfast or for your smoothie bowl. I'm gonna give you guys another garden tour. I did one last year, but I feel like I've kind of changed a lot. So let me take you on a little tour. Here's the strawberry patch, which we'll come back and pick some strawberries later. This is my little herb garden. We've got rosemary, thyme, oregano, lemon balm, mint. I don't know what else is in there. Something else that I can't think of right now, but yeah, lots of good herbs. Here we have some Brussels sprouts, eggplant, peppers are mostly in this area. And if you walk over here, I have a lot of tomato plants, so lots of different tomatoes. And then this is one of my favorites, a little chamomile patch. And all these came back from actually last year, the chamomile here. I planted some new ones in the back, but everything that's blooming right now is from last year. Thank you. 
I'm gonna pick some strawberries. I could have used these in my smoothie bowl, but I just had some extra strawberries in my fridge, so I wanted to use those up. So I'm just picking some fresh strawberries. The raspberries should be coming up soon. I have really tiny strawberries. I don't even know what variety they are. They're kind of like eating a blueberry, but strawberry flavor. They're actually really good. Even though they're not the typical giant strawberries you see, they're really tasty. And remember to live holistically. You don't have to garden and do all this planting that I do. It's really about just finding those moments of connection. And I find being out in nature is really good for that. So it doesn't mean you have to be out in the garden to find these moments of connection, but maybe going out in nature and just observing the plant life could be a really good way to kind of tap into holistic living. So one of my projects for today is to repot these two orchids. So I'm gonna share with you how to do that. I'm definitely no pro. I've done it once before, so I'm going based off of memory and a TikTok video that I saw that kind of refreshed how to do it. So I don't know, we're gonna see how it goes. This one here hasn't bloomed um, in a while, so I figured I'd try to repot it and see if that helps. And this one here has been looking sad for a while. I've already repotted it once. It's It was looking sad, so I repotted it. It kind of still looks like this. I don't know, she's like holding on for dear life, so I don't want to get rid of her, and I figured maybe we'll repot her again and see if we can help give her, I don't know, some extra nutrients, maybe bring her back to life. There's still life in it. It, it looks sad, but there's still life. I don't know. So let's see what we could do. And I'm doing this outside because I'm, I make an absolute mess when I do things like this, so this is going to make my cleanup so much easier. So to start, I'm just disinfecting my pruners with some alcohol and let's start with the healthier guys so we're just going to take it out of its pot and then clear away the bark and kind of expose the roots and then what you want to do is really cut off any of these dead roots so you see these have no life to it some of the yellow ones they still feel healthy so i'm not going to cut them off only the ones that are like kind of like dead and dehydrated i'm going to cut off So this is how the roots look after pruning or clipping. And then you could go to a bigger pot size. I really don't want to because I have a pretty pot that I already keep this one in. I think it's gonna be okay putting it back in the same size. I think there's gonna be enough room for the roots. You really are supposed to clean out your pot, like disinfect it before you put it back in, but it looks pretty healthy. So I'm skipping that step. And also I tend to like to switch on and off between actually wearing garden gloves and then taking them off and just using my hands. I don't know, that's what I do. So you just fill with this orchid potting mix that I have. It's a lot different than typical potting soil or indoor potting soil. So I would suggest actually getting something specific for orchids because regular potting soil probably really wouldn't work. All right, on to the next guy. As you can see, she looks a little sad compared to the other orchid. Not many roots going on here. And I don't know if you can see, but in the pot itself, there's a lot of dead roots like in the soil. So I'm gonna dump this soil and just get some fresh soil. And I'm literally just dumping it on the ground right here because it's basically like wood chips and mulch around me. So it could just mix it and it'll be fine. No need to throw it out. This container, I will actually disinfect because there was a lot of kind of old dead roots in there and obviously this guy is not doing well so let's give it the best chance it can and disinfect its home. So not as many roots to clip away since most of them were dead in the soil so this is a little bit of an easier cleanup. Same thing as before, just filling with fresh new orchid mix, making sure the plant is nice and supported in there, as supported as you can be with barely any roots. And there you go, 
back in its home with some new soil. Uh, we'll wish this little fella good luck. And then, so nice, literally such an easy cleanup. Just literally throwing this bark on the ground and not making a mess in my home. Thank you guys for sharing this time with me and I hope this video gave you some ideas on how you can work toward living more holistically. And there's not anything specific you have to do to live more holistically. It's really just about finding that connection with your soul, with your spirit, with nature, those kinds of things. So I hope this vlog helps give you some ideas on how you can do that. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.